Hi everyone, I'm Eric and welcome back to my series on computational science. In this video we're going to be looking at the C++ programming language, getting started, and using uh, my favorite IDE. Um, I'm not going to talk really about the installation process. Uh, I'm going to hope that you find out how to get C++ onto your computer. Now I am using a compiler called uh, the GNU C++ compiler and that is built on top of the GNU C compiler. So I might talk about a, a C compiler or a C++ compiler interchangeably. The reality is when you install the GNU C compiler, you automatically get the C++ compiler. So C and C++ compilers usually come together. And, and that's just kind of why there's some overlap in the way we talk about them. To use a C++ compiler from a command line, you're going to type G++ followed by the name of your program. Okay. Now I've already created a program. Uh, here my, you can see my program is just called program.cpp. CPP is a very common extension for a C++ program. Uh, there are some other extensions, but I'm just going to stick with CPP for now. Uh, if we see other file extensions come up, I'll make note of it. All right, so to compile, we're going to use GPP, and then we're going to type program.cpp. And this will compile our program. Now the default is it's going to create a new program for us, and that program name by default will be a.out. So a.out is our default output. Now if I do ls, you can see we have a.out. On my terminal, it is red because I color code things. And if I look at my program, we can see it's a very simple program. It just says, this is my program, yo, uh, because that's what I think every first program wants to say. All right, so let's run it. So if we run our program, it does exactly what we want it to. Um, we're not going to worry about the contents of this program yet. That'll come in a later video. Um, but I do want to make it clear that uh, the way we compile is with G++ followed by the name of our program. Now we can give some options to this. I can do dash O uh, and that would give us an output name. You know, executable oops, program, you know, and the dash O allows us to create a program. And now here I call it an executable program, which is probably longer than we need, but it'll run. Now, because of the way my terminal works, you will notice I do have to put a dot forward slash and then executable program. And there's no space between it. And it's just because of some of the details of how the terminal works. Um, I'm not gonna talk about how the terminal works in this video. I'm really gonna focus on how C++ programming works. So you can write a program using any text editor. Once again, if I look at, you know, if we look at the contents of our pro of our program file, it's just a text file with some text we've written into it. Now, we want an editor that'll make editing the program easier. And we want an editor that will have tools that will automatically do all the G++ business for us. And as programs get more complicated, there are more things we have to do at the command line. Um, and we don't want to think about that. We want to let another program think about that for us. So I use an integrated development environment called Sea Lion. Now the website is just jetbrains.com forward slash Sea Lion. All right, so the IDE that I like to use for C++ development is Sea Lion. Sea Lion is not a free IDE. If you use Sea Lion, you have to pay for it unless you're a student. So if you're a student or you work for university, you can get a free license to use C-Lion. At least that's the, my current understanding. I don't work for the company, so I don't know their policies. Uh, I do know I was able to get it for free because I am a student. Um, so I recommend that you try C-Lion. If you don't use C-Lion or don't want to, you're welcome to use any other IDE. Most IDEs are pretty similar, so it's not gonna be too terribly different. It's often just which menu do you go in to find something. But I do think C Lion is a very good platform. So I've already installed C Lion, and when you open C Lion, you come to a page like this. Uh, then you can create a new project. Uh, I'm going to create um, a new project, which I'm going to just call IDE Demo. And C Lion will automatically create a project for you, and it's going to create a, just a, your first main uh, program. So it, I'm using two monitors and it just put it up on the top monitor. So I'm going to bring everything down. 
Now it's going to take a minute to load because what uh, the ID does is it goes through and it figures out where everything is on your computer. Uh, C-Line is based on some other software called CMake. So if you're going to use C-Line, you should probably also install CMake on your computer. Once again, I take care of all these packages and, and all the management of that through uh, my Mac ports at the terminal. So if you haven't, if you have some sort of package management system, I just recommend that you use that to make sure that you have all the dependencies you need. You're going to need Make, you're going to need CMake. These are all tools that make your life as a developer easier. All right, uh, I'm going to just ignore this tip for now. Normally, I do like to look at a tip when I start up. And this is a main program. It puts in Hello World, but we all know that what it really wants to say is, you know, I'm a great program, yo. A few more exclamation points. That's how it knows we're cool. All right, so, you know, this is a very standard program. Now, in Sea Lion, it should automatically know how to run the program for you. Now, because I'm opening Sea uh, Lion and I'm opening this project for the first time, it has to actually go through all of my directories, find all of the different um, libraries and packages and things like that. So you'll notice in CLine there are two files. There's main.cpp and cmakelists.txt. Uh, when we look at the cmakelists, uh, you're probably not going to understand a lot of what's here, but this is how we control our program. And we'll see a few things in here that are important. You'll see the um, the set, we're going to set the CXX or C++. So here CXX means C++ flags. And our C++ flag is going to tell us we're using C++ 11 as our standard. Well, the C++ 11 standard is the one that I think is the best right now. Uh, if you're watching this video in the future, we may be at a future standard that's even better. Um, like many technologies, C++ is evolving and getting better with time. All right, uh, we're not going to be able to build this program until the symbols have finished building. And because of the way that C line works, it has to kind of go through all of your directories and check everything out. So it does take a minute when you first open your program. Since most of our programs are going to be longer than just these few lines, uh, usually we'd be writing our program. We'd be adding another C out statement. You know, this is another line to print. To the screen. So here we have a couple lines. We can see the symbols have finished building and we can see uh, we now have the green build all button. All right when we click on build all it's gonna run our program. Oop, I forgot about this. Uh, the first time we run our program we have to tell our program what executable we want to use and we're just gonna use the default one of IDE demo. So we click uh, here select IDE demo and our program will run. At a future date I may want to do a few videos just related to C-Line because it's a very powerful IDE um, that I've used to work with many many other useful products. Alright so it does all the building for us and then it prints everything to the screen uh, right down here. So I think with C-Line it makes editing the code easy and when we run it everything also works easy. So that's all I really wanted to go over today was uh, how a C++ program is compiled and how to use C-Line. So in the future, I'm really not going to spend too much time on the IDE. Most IDEs work the same. There's a button you push. When you push the button, it compiles it and it runs it. Uh, that way you don't have to go through the process of G++ program and then, you know, dot forward slash A dot out. So. All right, I hope this video was useful and thank you for your time.